Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here today with a design team G um, video for Gina B. Aaron's design team. I have a project that I haven't done in a very long time or a variation of the project. So I wanted to show you how to do metal embossing. Now, the metal embossing that I'm going to do is starting out using a kind of tape and not actually using like copper metal, cut metal, anything like that. Here I am fiddling around with this stuff, deciding whether or not I want to show it. <laughs> All right, so this is my first narration, so y'all have to bear with me. All right, so I had these metal sheets that had uh, sticky stuff on the back of them from a company that I cannot find them from again. There were five sheets and they're, uh, I think they're six by 12 inches. And there were five sheets in the package and I've had them for many years. So I dragged them out after watching a Pinterest video and decided that's what I wanna do for um, Gina's mark making challenge this month for the design team. So I wanted to make small pieces because it's been a while since I've done this. So I cut the metal into two inch strips and laid down, this one is Atomic 12 stencil on here, which is one of my favorite flower shapes that she has. And I'm going over it with a stylus. Now underneath there, I have a hard board and I have folded up newspaper. That's what it looks like with the stylus. I have three stylus that came in a package and they're from Martha Stewart. Now I'm looking for I need a stem and some some leaves because they weren't in the ones that I looked at that I own. So I'm freehanding the leaves and the stems to the, this particular flower on here. Not very hard. Just a lot of straight lines. It's pretty quick to get them on there. You just have to figure out which stylus will dig the most into the, the very thin metal tape and um, will leave a good impression because you want, once you cover it with color, you want the color to settle down into the lines and the marks that you make so that you can see the design better. So all I'm doing here is just putting very small little vein-like things into the leaves. Not rocket science. Believe me, if it was, you know I would not be doing this. I'm sorry I'm having to do a voiceover. My husband has a hearing problem and he turns up the TV very loud and I can hear it in my studio because he likes to turn it up loud with the bows and um, it reverberates all around the house when he turns it up. So when I was going to edit my video the other day, I realized that I could hear Star Trek in the background. And so that's why this has got parts that are voiceovers because I can't put it on YouTube like that because they will kick it off because they can hear that noise. All right, so I'm just doing a smaller stylist for the um, little marks in the stem. And then I'm going to start making marks in the head. There they are, all the little marks I just made. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm going to make in, I guess it's an official Zentangle pattern. I'm not really sure, but you make these little swirls. Oh, well, wait, I'm going to do the edge first with one of the balls, the ball stylus to make a frame around the, the flower. So I'm just going along and creasing it along the edges. And that's about all I do to it. I really don't do anything until the next part. I'm just making sure that I have a place to do some kind of um, marks. Now I'm going to do, am I going to do the marks on the sides? Let me see how, wait till it changes over. Yep. Okay, so all I'm doing is making little hash marks around the side. And this is supposed to speed up because honestly, it's not that stinking exciting, even for me. <laughs> I like doing this stuff and it's not really that exciting. It's satisfying, but, you know, it doesn't go quickly on a video. All right, so I'm just going around the whole thing. And that's all there is to that. Then the next part is where I draw a design on the head of the flower. This is an official Zentangle pattern. 
and it's called pretemps, P-R-E-T-E-M-P-S, I think is what it's called. And they're just little swirls. All I'm doing is just filling in the flat spots. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm taking a, a, a larger bald stylus and I'm poking little indentations all around the flower so that that's where the paint will settle when I go to paint it. I did notice when I watched this video like 10,000 times that in the far corner, I forgot to put it down where the other leaf is. I did fix that. And so it, so it is, um, it is done. All right. Here I'm showing you that I want to pop up the head of the flower. So I'm trying to do it from the backside when I should have done it a different way. I did learn from this mistake that by me taking that fat stylus and rubbing it on the newspaper, which is on the board, it didn't pop up as much as it could have. And I should not have put a design in it because what it did was it flattened the design out and it made it less prominent on the head of the flower. So I thought, OK, let me go back and put down the fun foam and try it again. And this time include the leaves and the stem so they all have dimension so that they stand out. And I didn't get as high a rise in them as I like. So I thought, okay. So I went back around them again thinking, well, if I do it on, I should have done it on the backside, but it's sticky and it's a little hard. Now, if this was a piece of copper, it would have been a whole lot simpler, but I didn't have that at the time. So I was watching a woman's video. And in the video, she takes or talks about how she takes wax and melts beeswax into the indentation, which is the debossed side of the metal and puts the wax in there so that when the wax cools, it's hard as a rock. And then the popped up side on the other side does not cave in when you rub it or you do anything to it. It won't collapse. Collapse is, I guess, a better word. So here I am using um, just a, a candle we had on hand for in case, you know, we need candles when the power goes out. And I'm filling in the head of the flower, the stem, and the leaves. And I have to tell you, you wouldn't think that a little metal sticky back tape thing gets hot. Oh, contraire, Pierre. It does get very hot. So you sh I should not have done this on fun foam. I should have done it on some other surface. All right, so it's all cooled off now. So I'm going to take Deco Art Media. Uh, it's called uh, Antiquing Cream, and that was the black. I took a makeup spine, uh, makeup round that you take off your makeup with, and I'm smearing it all over the metal. Boy, did I get carried away. I used way more of this stuff than I actually had to. This was bad enough, and then I added more. I, I don't know what I was thinking. I think I was thinking that the more I put on it, the better it was going to look. You know how you just go one step too far, and you're like, oh, I should have just left it alone. Well, that's kind of how I feel about doing this. So you have to set it aside and let it dry, and then you buff it with sandpaper. Here is the second two-inch strip. Oh, nope. There is another piece of metal, that metal tape stuff. And this is one of Gina's stencils. Now, it doesn't look like it in the beginning, but it is. It's with the color wheel stencil. So I only did the inner part of the color wheel, and that was it. I did the stenciling on it. I mean, the um, embossing on it. And now I had, I'm at that point where I'm ready to do the color for it. So I put way more black on it than it needed. And then I let it dry, and then you sand it off of there. All right, here's where I'm taking the soft sand sponge that my uh, I found at a local little hard uh, mom and pop hardware store. We have it's spongy on one side, and the other side is a very low grit or high grit sandpaper, which makes it very fine. So all I'm doing is sanding off the paint. See how one side's shiny, you know, the side's got the paint on it. So uh, the paint settles into the cracks and crevices, and that's what gives it that antique look or that old, old look. I really like that look. I've tried it with lots of different metals, and I, I like it no matter what the metal is. I should have gone a little more over 
the leaves towards the top. They, they're a little, a little too thick. And I think I did this either once or twice because I thought one time, well, I took too much off, so I put more on. And then I did it again. And, you know, it's, it's all a process. All these mistakes that I made doing these things made the stuff I did after this look much better, and I was more pleased with it. See, I got, I should have done that last set of these. Okay, so this segment is me talking about the wax that you saw me put in to the deboss side of this one specific um, flower. I decided that the wax was not the best solution because it popped out on me a couple of times and I had to re-melt. And I decided that it's good for a temporary solution, but it wasn't the one that I really thought would work best for me. So I went ahead and took a um, palette knife and dug as much of the wax out of there as I possibly could. So now that it's out of there, I discovered that you can use texture paste. So you just take a palette knife, you take the texture paste, and you spread it in there like you're buttering a piece of toast. My texture paste, unfortunately, was not as soft as butter could be um, because it's really old and I haven't used it in a long time. So I struggled to get it in there. But it worked rather nicely. The only downside is, is that the deeper the deboss side is, the longer it's going to take to dry and the more texture paste it will take. Because once it dries for a couple of hours, it sinks in and then you might have to reapply again. So that makes it nice and smooth on the back. Okay, so we're back to this right here. This is pretty much dried, and I think this will be easy to glue on a surface like paper, cardboard, you know, whatever you're going to glue it on. Because you filled in the back, it makes it easier for it to stick to the surface. All right, so I did some research, and let me tell you what I found. You need a product if you don't want to use texture paste or molding paste or spackle. They make a product, and it's by Merck Art USA, M-E-R-C Art USA. Had a devil of a time finding it, but I did see it in several people's videos. I went to their site, and their site is very, uh, lack, it's lacking, let's put it that way. And I think they're based out of Irving or da around Dallas, Texas. Um, they have tools. They have the filler and it was $13 for a four ounce bottle. So I don't know about you, but I don't want to spend $13 on a four ounce bottle. It's a, it's a nice little round fat bottle that has, you know, a nozzle applicator on it. So all I have to do is just squeeze it in there. But honestly, this is a whole lot cheaper. And I did hear one of the metal artists say that you can use spackle, molding paste, and, uh, you know, texture paste of some sort. So you use whatever is within your budget. My budget does not allow $13 for a four ounce container. Alrighty, so we got that. And something else that you might, if you really want to go nuts over this, uh, I went to Amazon and I looked at tools. And Amazon has Walnut Creek embossing tools. I did order them. They have not come yet. I'm waiting for them to come so that I can try them out. But I had difficulty finding the same type of tools that some of the demo people did in their YouTube videos. I had a hard time recognizing their tools or finding their tools or getting links for their tools. But Walnut Hill does have a small package, and I think I paid $16, and they give you the heads. There's like eight or ten different heads, and then you've got that interchangeable tool. Um, you know, like one that'll run this way. It's sort of like miniature, a miniature uh, score tool from what you used when you were sewing. Let me show you two others that I have that I probably, let's see if they're in here on the top of my drawer here. Um, you could probably use these tools right here. I know these are a blast from the past. These are more spaced out and they're single they're a single roller and then they just pop in and then you pop it out i've had these a long time and this is a double where there's two wheels on this one and they you know again pop in pop out and you can use these on all kinds of different surfaces and let me see let me find some tape 
This is a very small piece of tape here. Let me try these. I haven't tried these. Let's see. You'd have to do it on a hard surface, yeah, but they kind of crinkle it a little bit. But these walnut heel tools that I saw look like they would work really well for embossing. Plus, you've got credit cards, you've got pencils, you've got all kinds of other stuff in your stash that you can use. You can find other stylists on the internet, but the thing is, is that you... You, they give you a bunch of tools and then they give you the balls. They look like mill and ballers. But it's not really necessary to buy 32 tools. You need like maybe six, eight tools. I mean, I have three stylists and then the stumps, you can buy those on Amazon. They're really cheap. They're like less than $6 and you get a whole bunch of them in a package because that's where I got mine from. Um, I also ordered more of this type stuff of the adhesive sheets and I'm wait I, I ordered those with the um, with the stylus tools mark making tools and we'll see what happens so I'll have those in another video all right so I want to show you what I did with Gina's stencils so here's the first one of her stencils that I used I guess I could get this booger out of here this looks so bad let's put oh look there's a semi-clean side. So I did this one and I did this one. Now these are all Gina stencils and I I took the stem and stuff from an uh, from this stencil here and added onto this one. This one I freehanded. You saw me do that. So there there are those and then there's another one of her stencils. And then uh, this is the first one that I used her stencil with. I did it on the on the tape. And I like it, but you know the tape is very thin and you're not going to get anything to really pop up or go in other than just some sharp mark making tools and that's about it. Let me show you what I did with it. Okay, so that's what started this whole idea is this right here. I took I took a Canson watercolor paper journal book and I decided that I hate the blue color. They're not very attractive and we're all about altering things, right? So I took, I, has, I had my husband bring me home some tape from the hardware store and I cut it into little tiny squares and then I embossed each little square in a design that I wanted and I used my shoe polish on this, my paste shoe polish and then I made this. So then I thought, well wouldn't that be cool to make it with a stencil? I know you can run your embossing folders through the machine but honestly I don't want to drag all that stuff out. It was much easier to just kind of doodle on little tiny squares and then kind of piece them together like a quilt. So then I took Gina's stencils and I used one of the stencils and just laid it down over the little metal you know, the separating tape stuff, and made this. And then I thought, well, don't I have some of these sheets of metal? And I thought, oh, let me go look. Then I found the sheets, and then I made these. So stencils are not, uh, can be used in so many different ways. Well, I've been on the design team. I've tried to show different ways that you can use stencils besides just pushing color through them. I wanted to use them to create texture and a dimension, and these, this is perfect. I love these. So these will be glued onto a journal or uh, even I, let's see, what else did I try? I tried a technique that I saw. Now this is not using Gina's stencils. This was just an idea I saw and I wanted to try it out. So let me move these guys off of here. So I took another strip of the metal and I did marks all over. I just did a little hashtags. There's no no copyright issue here or anything. And I had the inside popped up and I accidentally mashed it in and I thought, oh, that's gotta go. I don't wanna do that. So I took my stylus that was looks like the pokey tool and I cut the metal out. And now I have a little frame that I can put over anything I want. I mean, I can, and there's another one of Gina's flowers. I can put this over something else. Of course, you don't want to just do the metal on metal unless you really want to use that for another dimensional look. 
So I put this over, you know, you can put it over color. You can do all kinds of things. These can be glued onto cards, books, tags, you name it. You're only limited by what you can figure out to use it for. There are a bazillion, bazillion YouTube videos on how to do this technique. And I will put the person whose art that I have really enjoyed... Um, there's two people, One, I'll put three links to people who do the metal embossing whose style and their technique were easy to understand and I liked their end result. Let me see, where's my paper I was quoting my prices off of? No, see, that's the thing. All right, so I did find a book on Amazon that I thought would be great for beginners, and it's called Mad About Metal, and the author's name is Monica Fisher. I will put the link below. And it had 50 projects that you could make out of the tape metal and different kinds of metals. I thought this was an outstanding idea. All right, let me show you something else. I got so excited about the metal. I got an Amazon package today. And I ordered myself, and I did try to get my husband to get this in the hardware store, and he could not find it. I'm going to open, oh, this way. I bought myself. Now, it's the fattest one I could find that I could afford. But this is copper tape, just like this. You can see it's a lot skinnier. So I ordered this off of Amazon, and I don't remember how much I paid for it, but you can find this. And then I just said, well, what if I really want to use, like, metal metal? So then I got 38-gauge copper tone squares. These are 5x5, five five, and there are 12 pieces. Now, this is not the kind that comes with sticky on it. This is the actual metal, metal sheet that someone has cut. And there you go. So there will be more videos to come with embossing and depossing. I hope that you got something out of the video, something that will spark some interest for you on how to use Gina's stencils in a different way besides pushing paint through them. I just thought this was a cool use of the stencil and it's not the embossing folder, it's an actual stencil. I just had such a great time making these. So I'm gonna do another video showing more of the embossing and debossing whenever I get those cool tools, which I think they estimate will be around the 3rd of October. All right, so I will see you guys next month. I hope you enjoyed this. Bye-bye.